Church. Welcome to church on this beautiful, gloomy morning. It's been gloomy for the last few days. And then we had this beautiful, warm sunshine, then it's gloomy again. It actually is a reflection of what our hearts are sometimes like, right? Sometimes we feel so gloomy, and sometimes we feel bright. Sometimes we feel, you know, just kind of somewhere in the middle again. But that's one of the great joys when we come to gather at worship, because when we come here week by week, we're reminded of the fact that God never changes. He's always the same, and it doesn't matter what our mood is, God is always the same. And so when we celebrate great passages like this one in Psalm 103, we can be reassured that God is still the same, 103 Psalm. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. The great old theologian Karl Barth once wrote, we live by forgiveness every day we ought to begin. We may begin with confession. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. So I think it's really appropriate that as we begin this morning, we recite the ancient Apostles' Creed. It's, it's nearly 2,000 years old, and the church has been reciting it ever since. So I want to invite you to stand. The Apostles' Creed is here. We're going to recite it together with churches all around the world today as we confess our truth as we believe in God and in his truth. Let's recite it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. Merciful God, you made us in your image with a mind to know you, a heart to love you, and a will to serve you. But our knowledge is imperfect, our love inconsistent, our obedience incomplete. Day by day, we fail to grow into your likeness in your tender love. Forgive us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And prepare us with clean hearts full of worship. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Let's worship God. Let's just sing this together. We, uh, we actually don't have the words back there for this, but you know it. Because here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that. You're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful too. One more time, here I am. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say. Awesome. Let's worship this morning. Amen. Let's sing this together. 
together sometimes Sometimes you gotta dance through the darkness Sing through the fire Praise when it don't make sense Sometimes you gotta stare down the giant Worship from the lion's den Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mountain Louder from the valley Trusting that he's gonna get you there Sometimes you gotta welcome the wonder Pray for the answer Worship with your hands in the air I'll praise you anywhere Praise, give him praise, give him praise In the highest praise Give him praise, give him praise In the highest He is worthy He is worthy of all of our praise Sometimes you gotta praise in the prison, cry out to heaven, shout till the doors swing wide. Sometimes you gotta stand on your shackles, brave in the battle, worship with your hands held high. I'll praise you anywhere, praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest In the highest he, give him praise, give him praise. In the highest he, he is worthy. He, he is worthy of all of our praise. Faithful all my life, blessings day and night, countless reasons why. I'll praise you anywhere Every promise kept Goodness every step Each and every breath I'll praise you anywhere Faithful all my life Blessings day and night Countless reasons why I'll praise you anywhere Every promise kept Goodness every step Each and every breath I'll praise you anywhere Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. He is worthy of all of our praise. I'll praise you anywhere. The mountains in bounds, I know that. I'll praise you anywhere Yes, Lord, this morning we declare that uh, in every season, in, in every time, in, in every moment of heartbreak or every moment of joy, we know that you're good, Lord. And we know that you love us. And so this morning we praise you that you are everlasting. We praise you that in every season we can turn to you, lift our hands and say, God, you're good and we worship you. So we choose to do that this morning. Let's keep worshiping.
and strength will rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our Right, so uh, I don't know, most of you are familiar with this, but uh, maybe, you know, maybe you aren't so familiar with it, being in a church like this. And so uh, something that we are so passionate about, right, is that uh, our faith, our, our belief in God, you know, uh, is so much more than just following rules, right? Uh, and we don't think the Bible is just this list of rules of things that we're supposed to do or not do. Uh, but we believe that we have a God who loves us so much uh, that he wants to have a relationship with us, right? And he wants to be close in times of trouble. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons why we sing this song, right? You're the everlasting God, is because even in the valleys, you know, when times are hard, you know, life is so difficult, but even in those times that are hard, we can worship at the top of our lungs because we know that God is good and he's with us in every season, right? So let's just sing that together with one voice, one last time, you're the everlasting God. We, let's get those words up here on the, on the screen. Beginning of the chorus, here we go. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do not fade, you won't grow weary. You're the defense. Comfort those in need, and you lift us up on wings like
every song we could ever sing and worthy of all the praise we could ever give. and worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you let's sing his name sing jesus you're Jesus, the name above every other name. And Jesus, the only one who could ever say. And worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you, so holy. song we could ever sing. You're worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. You're worthy of every breath we could ever bring. So we live for you. We want to live for you, Jesus. With Jesus, the name above every other name. The only one who could ever say, You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. this morning with, with one voice, with one heart, with one church, uh, that we give our lives to you. We give our lives to you. We want to build our lives upon you, Lord. Let's sing this together. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I
sing that one last time. Lord, we give you our hearts right now. We declare with our lives, with every action, with every decision we make, we want it to be worshiped to you, Lord. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning, God, just astounded by who you are and your grace and your love and your forgiveness and your compassion towards us. And God, what a great morning it is to come and worship you. Lord, to lift up who you are in our lives, to set aside any distractions, any pain we might have, any anything that is holding us back, and just give our time and our worship to you this morning, Lord. And it's always such a blessing to do this as the church, to do this as your body, Lord to come together and lift up praises and sing loudly together. It's such a beautiful melody, Lord, and such a wonderful time to lift our hands, to praise, to dance, to worship, and to just give it all to you, Lord. And Lord, it's, uh, God, I, I understand the blessings that you give us and the goodness and the joy. And yet, Lord, we still exist on this earth. And here right now, Lord, amongst us, there's both beauty and pain. There's grace, but there's also sorrow. And Lord, there's times where we just need you. And God, maybe for some of us this morning, it was a great moment to just set aside everything. God, and just feel your joy in your presence. And maybe for some of us, it was a challenge. God, because we, as we exist in this world of, of brokenness and pain and also a lot of unanswered questions, Lord, both for us personally and for the world, God, it can bring fear and anxiety. And yet, Lord, I pray for everyone here who feels that. God, may you comfort them in this morning. May you comfort them with your presence. May you comfort them with your church. And God, may we just lift all of our fears, anxieties, struggles, pains, sicknesses, hurts to you, Lord. And God, as a church, we want to pray for one another. We want to lift up each other in praise and also lift up each other's burdens. And God, we want to lift up our special friends, the new ones, Lord, and the times that they're facing right now with the return of Sean's cancer, God, and a lot of unanswered questions. Lord, may we be the church and lift them up and support them and care for them and love them and show them the grace and compassion that only you model. And God, may you be the miraculous healer and supporter and caregiver to them. Lord, we praise you that you give us each other so that we could lift up each other's burdens. And yet, God, we just pray for the endurance to keep doing so and doing so gladly. Lord, help us to be the church for each and every one of us who need each other. And God, as we spend time in your word this morning, God, learning and growing from you and learning about the importance of things like forgiveness God, it's just a good morning to be together. So, Lord, continue to guide us this morning. Continue to care and shepherd us and continue to bring joy, even when it's cloudy and foggy out, Lord. You are the ultimate joy giver. We ask this in your name. Amen.
Amen. You guys can be seated, please. I will let you greet one another, but not yet. Not yet. There's a couple of things that we want to highlight here as a church. Uh, first and foremost, uh, my name is Brandon. For those of you who haven't met me, I am the pastor of Students and Connections, which means I hang out each and every week with junior high and high school students. They keep me young or give me gray hair. I don't know, one or the other. With us, I want to invite you to actually connect with us. There's a couple of ways we do that. First is head over to our website. It's www.comcov.org. And if you feel inclined so, fill out the Connect card. It's right at the bottom of our page. We read these every week, and we respond to them every week. And it's one of the main ways that we can get you signed up to our e-blast, to our prayer chain. We have a prayer chain where we're praying for people every week. And if you want to be a part of that, we can sign you up there. Um, it's also the way that you can connect with one of us on staff. Um, and it's like the main tool that we like to use. So we like to highlight uh, every week. If you want more information about any of our ministries, please fill out that card and we will get you connected right away. The second way is uh, we are really good at greeting one another, and we have a time of fellowship following the service. We actually have a lot of food, a lot of coffee, and a lot of time to connect with one another. Um, and those are really good ways to either connect with one of us on staff or just to get to know new friends. And I promise you, especially today where it's inside, you can't really escape it. You're just a part of it the minute you leave. So please enjoy some food and be a part of it. Um, I do want to highlight something else that's happening today for you ladies. Um, this is mostly a praise because I think at this point everyone who is going has already signed up. But there are over 46 people signed up for our ladies' tea and cookie decorating in the multi-purpose room. Uh, this is going to be an amazing time for all of you guys to connect and have delicious cookies and delicious lunch. And it's just a really good intro to what's going on in our women's ministry. Um, and I when you completely forgot, I'm reminding you, please go visit the multi-purpose room, which is over in our courtyard following the service. It starts around 1145, and you want to get there to get a seat, so... Um, also, a big part of my job, and maybe some of you guys had this when you're coming in, is uh, we are establishing a greeting team and an usher team. We already have some really dedicated greeters who are here every week, and they do that, like, on their own. They just want to be there and be happy, friendly faces and give you high fives and hugs and say, uh, your name and how you're doing, and uh, we want to expand that team, and we also want to create an usher team here at Community Covenant Church, uh, meaning people in here to really help direct people like where to sit, and also if they have any questions during the service, like where's the bathroom. Um, we want to have a team dedicated in here, and if you are a friendly person who really likes to say hi to others and really help others get connected to our church, or you just really want to learn more about what these ministries are, we are having an open gathering time next Sunday following the service where I kind of give you an overview of what the mission and vision of these two ministries are going to be. And so even if you are like, I don't know if I really want to do that, but I'm interested, or I don't know, I just want to know what Brandon does, come and join us following the service next week. Um, originally it was going to be in the youth room, but we're actually going to do it in here. Because here it sounds a little bit better, and I have a microphone. In there I don't. I have a very soft voice, so it's really hard for me to talk loud. So we will be in here next Sunday following the service to give you an overview of what it means to be a greeter or an usher. But speaking of greeting, and also, I forgot about this, we have one other very special announcement that is not a part of our slides. Normally, following our greeting time, you would have our pastor, Pastor Eric Sorensen, deliver the message. But this week, we are blessed by Eric's better half. Karen Sorensen is going to be sharing on, yes, continuing in the stories of grace and truth um, with a very good but very deep topic of forgiveness. And so this is what I want. I want you guys to get up and greet one another. And then when you hear some loud music, that's sort of your cue to sort of sit down so that Karen's not trying to spend five minutes to wrestle you guys all back in. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to stand up, and we're going to spend a minute and a half saying hi to our neighbors, those around us. Yes. Someone left their wedding ring up on the podium, so this belongs to anybody. Otherwise, I just got a nice wedding ring. Okay. Uh, good morning. I'm thrilled to be speaking this morning. And uh, first, right off the bat, I want to thank this church for being one of my supporting partners in the work that I do in Micronesia. You know, it's been over a decade that this church has been one of those partners. So thank you. Thank you. I just returned recently from one of the trips. On, this particular trip was on the island of Guam. There's about 2,000 islands in Micronesia where I do my work. Um, so I was on the island of Guam on this particular trip. And uh, when I came back, many people from this congregation said, Karen, uh, what was the highlight of your trip? Because inevitably, there's just something I'm so excited about that happened when I'm um, working overseas. And so the story I'm about to tell is the highlight of that particular trip. So part of the work that I uh, often do when I'm on the islands, one aspect of my work is to provide professional counseling, which is the background that I have. And so on this trip, we're going to call this guy, his name's going to be for this story, Sam. Sam had cerebral palsy and he had severe epilepsy as a young child, uh, actually all the way through elementary school, and then, thank God, it stopped when he entered junior high. But it was so severe that he would have at least one episode a seizure a day, which would leave him exhausted, and oftentimes he'd have multiple seizures a day. So um, when that happens, he would be completely exhausted for hours, and he would need an aid to, like, get his work for him and to help him out. So his um, uh, issues that he was dealing with, his impairments, they were leaving him to the place where he needed a one-on-one -on -one aid. So he had a personal aid. 
And sadly, the aid is the biggest part of his trauma. So his aid ends up being abusive. And so not only is Sam severely bullied throughout in school, but his aid contributed to the bullying and it actually encouraged the bullying. And there was also some physical abuse that went on with this aid. Now, Sam had other things that weren't so great for him. He was not from the island of Guam, even though he was educated on Guam. He was from one of the s very tiny surrounding islands of Guam, Guam, one of the islands. And it happened to be the island where the people from Guam hate the people. They despise and are disgusted by the people of that particular island. So Sam also endured a lot of discrimination and bullying regarding his ethnicity. Now, if that's not enough, he also comes from a culture where families interact very differently. And this is true for the majority of Micronesian families. And that is, you don't have close conversations with your parents. As a matter of fact, when you interact with your parents, you look at their feet. That means that you're showing respect. So if you were to look them in the eye, there's no respect. So just, you know, extrapolate that from that. What do you think the level of intimacy is going to be with a child who can't even look into the eyes of one's parents? So this was the background to which um, Sam came. And again, bullying all through these years with this aid that was contributing to it. So finally, Sam decides, because uh, again, you don't talk about this stuff, the pain, the suffering with your parents, but it's so bad that he works up the courage and he goes to his mother and he says, Mom, here's what's going on, tells her. And her response was, uh, yeah, I'm sure that you're not perceiving that correctly. I'm sure your aide's just trying to do his job and is trying to help you. And here's, the here's what's really going on in that statement is she said, and, you know, we don't want to make waves. We don't want to, you know, be a squeaky wheel because we're a hated wheel. And so if we, you know, speak up and go to the administration or anything, then they're just going to hate us all the more. So, you know, I'm sure it's just not how you're perceiving it. And basically, you know, suck it up. Let's get through this. At that point, Sam, it's over for him. He has no, but no advocate he is helpless, and he's hopeless. He becomes extremely depressed. And he would be dead at this point if it weren't for his cerebral palsy, because that prevented him in Micronesia the way you kill yourself. They don't have access to guns in all the ways we do it here. The way they do it there is you hang yourself. And so how could you do that if you're not able to really walk and be mobile? So... Um, this is the, the situation that I enter into because Sam now is in college and he would, um, would go into these, he was extremely intelligent, like amazingly intelligent guy. But he would go into these bouts for like a week straight. He literally wouldn't be able to get out of bed because like, this depression would just annihilate him so, to the point of non-functioning. So he couldn't function. But so he would have, you know, stellar grades, and then all of a sudden, boom, nothing gets turned in. Nothing happens. And then stellar grades, and then boom. Well, in, at the college level, that's not going to work. So and the administration from the college where I do this pro bono work said, you know, gave them him this referral to come see me. So Sam comes in, and one of the first things I did when I saw Sam was, you know, hey, hey, Sam, let's have you picture yourself. Can you think of what you looked like when you were in, uh, let's say, first grade? Oh, I hate that kid. So he pictures the kid in his mind, and his first response, I hate him. And that was constant for Sam. You know, no matter which age, we go through the ages, and, and, that, and the reason I'm doing that is because, you see, I believe, well, the Scripture says that Satan is a liar and a deceiver, and he comes to destroy and so Sam is a perfect example of someone that Satan's done a great work on. He has internalized these lies, and he is being destroyed. So I, here's where I love my work. 
I, sometimes I just marvel, like, how did I get so lucky, God, to partner with you in this work? Because you see, there is a synergistic effect when you take psychological best practices and you couple that with the truth of scripture. Bam, like crazy, amazing, incredible. The things I see happening in the counseling room, unreal. And this is an example of that. So what, what I'm trying to do is uh, working with Sam is, come on, let's get these lies to the surface. Let's name them, let's say them, and let's I, like, uh, um, pull them apart and see, is that true? Now, Sam, I want you to picture another little boy who's in first grade, and he has cerebral palsy. Do you hate him? Well, no. Well, why? Let's picture him doing the same thing. He's walking and you know, he names something he did. Do you hate him? No. Well, why not? And then, so again, we're trying to get him to see the deception, that he's been deceived, that he's internalized these lies, most especially beginning to understand God's unfathomable love for him, that he is precious, that he is cherished, that he's irreplaceable. And so I'm doing this work on the, it was our very last session together, and I'm doing this intensive trauma technique with him. And all of a sudden, mid-technique, he stops, and he looks up with shock all over his face. And he says to me, I, I can breathe. And I'm thinking, well, I sure hope so. And, and he's like, again, just his face, I, I can breathe. I don't, I can breathe. It's like my chest is no longer constricted. I used to have like chains wrapped so tightly around me that it was literally constricting my breathing. I'm breathing. I'm taking full breaths. And it's like the chains were wrapped all over my body and I'm feeling them loosening and I'm feeling some of them are falling off of me. And he's looking at me, looking at me in awe, just complete shock and wonder. And that was the end of our session and he gets up and he wa walks out with his... Uh, um, braces, and you can just see all over his face as he walks out. He's practically glowing. He is so amazed and in awe of the work God had done. So uh, today we're going to be exploring a parable that was recorded in the book of Matthew. Matthew writes this, who is, and he's a follower of Jesus. And this story tells, uh, it's, it's at the very end of Jesus' career. His ministry is coming to a, to a close, and Jesus is trying to impart very important information to 